Margaret Prescott. Woo! Give it to her. Yeah. I have some dogs for you all that I'll, I'll give you um, afterwards, but we have to realize, talk about black women's magic, that single mothers are the fastest growing population of people going to prison in the United States right now. Our numbers, the number of men are greater, but the numbers of mothers as many as 80%. Women and children are also some of the fastest growing population of the homeless in places like Los Angeles, but also in other places. And we really have to look at what is that about, all righty? None of us would be here without our mothers. Is that right? None of y'all would be, you and Rapporteur wouldn't be here without his mother. But yet, uh, mothers are dumped on if you're an impoverished mother. On welfare, you're told that you're not doing anything when being a mother is one of the hardest jobs I've ever done. And anybody in here who is a mother knows what I'm talking about. But when um, Clinton brought in welfare reform in 1996, they really enforced, brought in a kind of a slave fare in this country. They had people, mothers on welfare, working for no wages at all. So you could go and replace a union employee, a wage worker, just bring in some workfare folks and have them do the job for no wages at all. And that is still going on today. And Trump has just announced that when he's done with tax reform, he's going after welfare reform because he thinks it has to be even more punitive than it is right now. And who they're going after are the women. Primarily, I mean, they're single men on welfare as well, but it's primarily the women that they're going after. And I just want to share some uh, stats with you right now. Um, Ameri people in the United States with zero income is up from 648,000 to 10.2 million people. That is with zero income, no income whatsoever. And you find with women, when welfare is cut, the numbers of mothers picked up for prostitution increases. It makes sense, because mothers are going to do what we need to do to keep a roof over our heads and to feed our children. And when we are criminalized in this way, we become vulnerable to violence. So that in South Los Angeles, when you have a spate of serial murders that happened between 1985 to 2000, and well, when was Lonnie arrested? 2010 or so. We thought that it was as many as 200 black women who were victims of four different serial murders. We recently found out that between five and 800 black women in South Los Angeles, bodies have been found, and South Los Angeles isn't that big. Not all of them are victims of serial murders, but Jane Doe, black female, found in an alley, maybe from a crack overdose or something, because, you know, I'm, sh you know, I'm shocked that more people aren't self-medicating themselves. Because right. when you have to live with that level of stress, with that level of poverty, your kids are hungry, you don't know if you're going to be homeless, you're going to be out on the street, people self-medicate themselves. Yeah. And then you got the crack epidemic, and then you have police and public officials didn't pay any attention to these murders because they labeled them a bunch of crackhead hoes. Right. And everybody in the world should know that these serial murders of that many women have happened when you have one white blonde student going missing, the whole damn world knows about it, but when you have hundreds of women in South LA killed, nobody gives a damn, but you know what? Black women's lives count. Our lives count. And we're here to give you uh, some of that data. I just want to say something very quickly on, um, on sex work, because there's a lot of mixing up with people who are trafficked, who are forced, there are coercion laws on the books already for that, but we find that Interpol and a lot of these anti-trafficking laws that are brought in don't really go after the folks who are trafficked. They go after immigrant women of color and get them deported. I'm from a little pole-ass village in the Caribbean. That's where I'm from. That's where I grew up. And when the sailor ships came in with U.S. sailors, you had grandmothers sewing dresses for their grandbabies to go down and earn some money because that's how the family was going to live for the next six months. So when you talk on a moral campaign, you're going to pick us up and deport us back to the Philippines, the Caribbean, you deporting us back to what? So we need to deal with poverty. Poverty has a woman's face. We need to deal with welfare reform. We need to value the work 
of mothers and other caregivers, our contribution to the world economy, according to UN figures, by the way, is something like $21 trillion, and this was a figure from the UN Women's Decade. So why is it that we're considered charity cases and getting a handout? We need to change that in Los Angeles, in this nation, and the world. Thank you very much.